was a pastor for 10 years, um, pastor the church, a large church in New York City. I have this as well. Absolutely. We have, since I've taken Shahada, I have led over 12 other pastors into Islam. So we're going to see more testimonies coming. Ho hold on, hold on. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. 12. You, you've you helped guide 12 other past Christian pastors to uh, yes. Islam, submission to the creator, not the creation. Yes? Yes. Please uh, share. Uh, I'll send them away. I'll send them your way. <laughs> we, 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 yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahilladzi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa dinil haqq liyuzhinahu ala dini kulihi wa kafa billahi syahida Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lah wa ashadu anna muhammad al abduhu wa rasuluhu la nabiya ba'dah Berjumpa lagi dengan channel saya Mars Tehno Saya doakan semoga semua sahabat dalam keadaan sehat selalu Pada video kali ini kami akan menampilkan kesaksian mantan seorang pastor di kota New York yang bernama Robert Westmoreland yang juga berhasil mengislamkan lebih dari 12 pastor lainnya. Next guest, get this. I was a pastor for 10 years. Um, pastor the church, a large church in New York City. Former ex-Pentecostal pastor of a large church. He was a Christian pastor for over 10 years. His story is one of the most touching revert stories, reaching over 2 million people, inspiring many to come into the folds of Islam. So, Mr. the Creator, not the creation. What's even more amazing is Robert Westmoreland. He came to Islam at a time when he was choosing his death date. I'm excited. Are you? Let's meet Robert. Welcome. How are you? Walaikum assalam rahmatullahi Peace be with you. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well today. It's a beautiful day here. <laughs> so I introduced you as a former ex-pastor of 10 years. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Can we get into that? Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what made you become a pastor. Uh, I, my upbringing, I grew up in church, um, traditional assemblies of God type of church, word of faith. And I always felt uh, a divine pull. Um, and so my rationalization was I was called to be a pastor and I was really good at gathering people. So I was, as a kid, I was always good at gathering little groups of people and, and it, it led to adulthood. And so I started a church called, uh, Kingdom Culture Center in New York city, uh, boasting about, gosh, we grew from 20 people to over eight different locations all over the country and uh was being mentored by top christian leaders and for some reason i just felt this is not it and i started questioning things uh regarding the trinity and different religion and it just wasn't making any sense to me i i couldn't understand a person who went to theology school uh matriculated in the highest of christianity being a bishop a so-called a prophet an apostle just couldn't have answers and uh, closed the church down folded. eight different eight <laughs> all eight locations all eight locations folded. Wow. folded and i went on this journey of trying to find god and ended up going into voodoo into what yeah. voodoo voodoo <laughs> explain unpack, unpack, un unpackage okay. this for us all right so voodoo or voodoo comes out of uh nigeria uh some of it comes out of benin and uh there's something called orisha worship so it's uh most people in america know it as santaria and it is uh a mixture of catholicism and african voodoo and so I started out in Santeria and what you also call Palomayombe, which is the worship of the dead. Uh, very, very animalistic, uh, very, I would say dark per se, uh, just was a little too dark for me. So I said I wanted to try the lighter version, which was, uh, which we call Ifa, which is also known as Isheshe Lagba. And Isheshe Lagba believes in one God, but God has assistants or partners. 
and the partners are called the Orishas. And so it's a lot of dealing with a lot of sacrifice, a lot of blood sacrifice, a lot of uh, divination, a lot of different uh, manipulating of the elements. When we talk about the elements, we talk about earth, fire, sky, rain, all these different elements that go into it. And it just, I'm a thinker. I can go into the highest of something and it, my brain starts thinking, well, when do we get to God here? We, we worship everything else, but when do we get to God here? And mm -hmm. and in the Orisha tradition, uh, the God's name is Oludumare. And Oludumare uh, is distant off and doesn't want much to do with humanity. So he sends the Orishas who are his partners who take care of humanity for him. So they require certain things. And I... Uh, became what you call a babalawo, which is called a father of mysteries, and um, initiated several people into the religion, uh, several well-known people into the religion, and ended up getting sick. Um, I could get people healed. I could do so many different things for other people. You, If you needed millions of dollars, I can get you millions of dollars. It came to me being sick. I also worked in healthcare. And I began to take on the symptoms of the patients I was treating. And I ended up being in ICU for two weeks. And prior to going into ICU, I kept going to my shrines. And I kept saying, I'm sick. What is going on here? We'll heal you if you do this. Sacrifice a chicken. Sacrifice a goat. Sacrifice a cow. I'm getting worse and I'm getting worse and I'm getting worse. And so I ended up on ICU and um, really strange. I remember watching two TikTokers, um, Maliki Click and Amina Roche. And Amina Roche talked about something called Tahajit. I called it Tajahun. I didn't know how to pronounce it. So <laughs> Tahajit. Mm -hmm. Tahajit, yes. The night prayer. That's the, that's the night prayer. That's the night yes. prayer. And my doctors were literally giving me because of the sepsis in my body and the infection. I had literally days to live. And so I said, I'm going to try this Tahajit thing and let's see if Allah works. And I didn't try it all Dumari. I didn't try it all the Orishas. I didn't try it all this other stuff. I tried Jesus. I didn't try it everybody. Nothing's working right now. Let me try Tahajit. So I tried Tahajit. First night, nothing changed. Second night, nothing changed. Third night, third night is where something really began to change. I, I would go down to the hospital chapel and they would let me go down and I would pray. The morning of the third night, the doctor came in and he said, we've been testing your blood hour upon hour and we notice your white blood cells are normal. You're normal. I was like, okay, this is the hedge. Okay, I'm going to take note. This is Tahajit. So I guess the Tahajit works. I was released from the hospital the same morning. And as I was driving home, I began to have thoughts. I don't think Allah did this. I don't think God did this. I'm going home to end this. I'm tired. I, I, I like what you said because you said Allah, they said God, because some people think yes. this is a, another God. This is the creator, God Almighty, Allah in Arabic. Yes. Yes. And so I don't think this really happened. And I'm out of the hospital. And I'm going home to end it. And so uh, something said, get your phone, go to TikTok. Maliki Click was on TikTok. And I've never in any TikTok history has have ever requested to go on someone's live. I said, can you give me Shahada? And he gave me Shahada. That was on June 26, 2023. So that was just recently. That was recently, yes. Yeah. So for people that don't understand, so the tahajjud, this is the uh, Muslims are encouraged to get up in the night and to pray to the Creator directly and alone, um, seeking His blessings, His forgiveness, His mercy, asking of your needs and whatnot. So you actually heard about this tahajjud from who again? Uh, Maliki Click. Uh, Maliki click okay. on. So, so you listen to someone from TikTok, Maliki Click, 
and he's talking about tahajjud and you're like yeah. let me give it a try before that you were talking about mil you can get uh what were you saying some about million dollars you can do oh, i can get people millions of dollars i can get you healed i can get you anything that you want i can do but when it came to me yeah it was working if someone says how how were you able to get if someone wanted these material things millions of how rituals so what you do is you do a lot of rituals and yeah. orisha practice and you can do what i said in the beginning manipulation there's a lot of manipulation here if i if if a particular shrine for instance uh orisha ajay which is the orisha of money if i needed a client to have money we would do so we would ask this orisha what do you want it would tell you what it wanted and then we would go ahead and do the uh the shrine. Also, we had them take in certain medicines and incantations and certain things. They had to do rituals, baths. It, 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 we would get results. I would get results in probably about two weeks with most of my clients. Yeah. Yes. So, so these are working with the jinn. We'd say you obviously work know what the jinn are. I, and in fact, I work with jinn. So you were working with the jinn. Correct. Now, did you know at the time you were working at the jinn? What you didn't call them jinn. What were you call, no, how, you what, call what, them. what did you what did you identify the jinn and at that time? Oh, jinns. Okay, again, there's two different the two different practices I did. Palo Mayambe, we would call it the igungun or the dead spirits, and so I knew I was working with a a diabolical spirit. And so, if you want to get your bidding done, give the spirit what it wants, and it will do what it wants for you. But of course, there's nothing for free, and so you you trade off a little bit, maybe a couple of years of your life. You trade off a couple of different things to get these things to happen. And so, with clients. Uh, they would say, listen, I, I'm I'm about to uh, audition for a movie. Can you do this for me? Sure. We're going to we're going to speak to the gins and we're going to or the spirits and the spirits are going to tell us what we need to do. And so it worked. Well, known people, I will, will never say their names, but uh, they were good clients and uh, it was very lucrative. And how, how long was this part of your life going on for after the pastor part, being after a pastor? pastor how long were you doing? Seven years? Seven years. So you were a pr priest in this profession now? Yes. So you're technically, they have a priest in this, what is it called again? A babalao. Wow. Yes. And this is all happening in New York? This is happening in New York, yes. Okay. So do the babalao also, they have um, like a temple? What do they call yes. it? They have temples. Uh, it's called, oh gosh, what is it called? Uh, they call it temple or ijo or different things like that or ile. And mm -hmm. so I had several temple members um, to track back. What really made me start questioning everything was the death of my adopted daughter, who was mm. a priest. She's what you call an Oshun priest, mm -hmm. uh, the deity of love, the river deity. Uh, she was. This is your. This is your your daughter now. Adopted daughter. Yes, adopted. Daughter. Adopted daughter. So, thank you so much. Very very interesting story. Inshallah, this inspires so many more pastors so many more human beings to look deeply into islam to think about the purpose of life and to contemplate yes. on death and yes. the reality of it coming at any time and for us to be prepared for it thank you so much thank you can i add this as well absolutely we have since i've taken shahada i have led over 12 other pastors into islam so we're going to see more testimonies coming Ho hold on hold on <laughs> wait 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 12 you you've helped guide 12 other past christian pastors to uh yes. islam submission to the creator not the creation yes yes, yes. please uh share uh i'll send them away i'll send them your way <laughs> we, we, yeah we love to uh to talk with them and inshallah expose more people to their to stories this is great news Amen. give them my uh peace my salams i would definitely do that appreciate you brother thank you salam alaikum salam say Semoga bermanfaat. Terima kasih telah menonton video sampai selesai. Mohon maaf jika ada terjemahan yang kurang tepat. Dukung channel ini dengan like, subscribe, dan share. Masya Allah, sebuah video dakwah yang sangat menarik dari sebuah channel YouTube The Din Show TV yang diasuh oleh seorang dai yang bernama Bro Edi. Pada tayangan episode ini, Bro Edi mengundang seorang mantan pastor dari sebuah kota di New York yang bernama Robert Westmoreland. Tak diduga dalam wawancara ini, 
Mu'alaf tersebut mengaku telah berhasil membimbing lebih dari 12 pastor lainnya untuk menjadi mu'alaf pula. Masya Allah. Sebuah kerja dakwah yang sangat baik dilakukan oleh seorang mu'alaf ini yang mantan pastor. Di awal video diperkenalkan bahwa mu'alaf ini telah menjadi pastor lebih kurang selama 10 tahun. Ditanya oleh Bro Edi, apa yang membuatmu menjadi seorang pastor? Beliau menceritakan bahwa dia dididik dan dibesarkan di sebuah gereja yaitu gereja tradisional firman Tuhan. Dan beliau selalu merasakan tarikan panggilan ilahi sehingga jiwa rasionalnya terpanggil untuk menjadi seorang pastor. Dan dia juga sejak kecil sangat pandai untuk mengumpulkan orang-orang. Dan tidak tanggung-tanggung beliau dibimbing langsung oleh pastor-pastor terkemuka di kota New York. Kala itu juga untuk beberapa alasan dia mulai mempertanyakan konsep trinitas dan agama-agama berbeda itu yang tidak masuk akal baginya. Singkat cerita beliau mengalami sakit parah sehingga harus dirawat di ruang ICU. Dia telah mencoba segala macam doa, doa kepada roh-roh, doa kepada Yesus Kristus. Tapi penyakitnya bukannya semakin baik, tetapi semakin parah. Kodarullah, beliau sempat melihat TikTok dari dua orang muslim, yaitu Maliki Klik dan Amina Rosh. Salah satu tayangan atau konten yang menarik dari keduanya adalah membahas tentang sholat tahajud, yaitu sholat malam. Apakah ini bisa menyembuhkannya pikirnya? Akhirnya dia mencoba untuk melaksanakan sholat tahajud. Di hari pertama saat dilakukan tes darah tidak ada reaksi. Begitu pula di hari kedua dia melakukan sholat tahajud tetapi tidak ada tanda perbaikan. Dan Alhamdulillah di hari ketiga setelah dia melakukan sholat tahajud, dokter yang memeriksa darahnya per jam mengatakan bahwa darahnya telah normal. Alhamdulillah dia berhasil sembuh dengan izin Allah. Dan akhirnya dia memutuskan untuk pulang ke rumah. Dan tak lama kemudian ia menjadi mu'alaf dibimbing oleh Malik Kiklik. Nah sahabat, Mungkin itu saja sedikit video reaksi dari saya. Mudah-mudahan bermanfaat. Wabilai taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.